I've done, I don't know, how many albums? 40 or 50? And nothing comes close. Nothing comes close to the intimacy of this particular recording. And and I think that's where, where it stands alone. Um, because of it, because it's an extremely personal recording as well. Not that the others weren't. They all had reasons and stories behind them. But I guess, you know, as we get older and, and we, uh, we try to find ways of, of interpreting how we feel and sharing how we feel um, and our ways to do it through our music, um, this is one hell of a meal. It, it really is. It's a, it's a, it's a beautiful um, coming together of songs from uh, with with completely different stories, but somehow seem to mesh into that one one center center point that just makes it stand alone. So the producer, <laughs> co-producer, <laughs> the producer, the producer of this is Mark Lalama, and uh, Mark Lalama um, is one of the most gifted musicians I've ever known. I think. And my, that's my opinion. I, he's a very gifted musician, but um, he has uh, an unbelievable ear and eye for what he wants. And 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 and, and his in, in his makeup, um, I think he honestly wants to hear something from someone that they've never heard, uh, or to find a new a new level of interpretation from them, or a new emotion or get them to face up to those those emotions that they're maybe skirting. And he's got that ability to bring out this in everyone, and especially in me. But when I met Mark, Mark was, uh, Mark basically just forced his way into our band. Um, uh, he was he did one gig with us, and and Jason Fowler, my, uh, my musical director, and I were talking about our upcoming shows, and we've got these shows coming up, and those shows coming up, and Mark kept saying, well, you know, I'm available. Uh, I got. Let me check my calendar. I'm, I'm, da, da, da. And it basically drove me nuts to the point where I said, "Look, go online, look at my website, tell me what dates you're free, and join us." And he did. <laughs> and so he just joined the band. He associates with uh, an incredibly great group of talented musicians, but he was never in a rush which is something that, that, that um, I enjoyed. Um, he, would, uh, he would just, once he was set up, he would sit and kind of tinkle around at the keyboard. Um, always coming up with a new idea for something that we've been doing for 10 years. Um, let's, now why don't we, how about trying that? And we had a chance, actually Mark and I had a chance to go on tour in the States alone, just the two of us. And we did all the same stuff we did. But it just felt so different because we, he changed the arrangements of it uh, to showcase my voice um, and at the same time um, fill that room with, uh, with, uh, with the music that he was, uh, he was supporting my voice with. And um, that, was on a, that was a great experience too as well. So um, Mark, Mark's a, he's just a kind of a unique guy. So that's always a, that's always a lot. That was a, a big benefit because he's a he's a monster uh, a keyboard player and, uh, and great vocalist, and so he he shines when he does it on, on stage with us. I remember the first time. Um, I heard the song was because I think I arranged that, but I never did get any. Uh, 
What what are you talking about? It's okay, carry on. Okay. Well, so happens a lot with her. <laughs> Amanda and Sheila were our guests, Amanda and Sheila Dalla. And uh, they sent me a an iPhone recording of it. And I remember, I don't know, I remember I was sitting right there at the piano. And I listened to it and I was uh, learning it. And, and for some reason I thought of my daughter and uh, I got all emotional. And I thought, this is a really emotional song disguised as a ditty. I said, those tricky girls, <laughs> they got me. Oh, darling, don't you know I have walked with you a while I have seen what makes you worry I have seen what makes you smile And when it's hard to count your blessings Don't forget the world counts you And you'll be fine And you'll be home And you'll be true So, yeah, we, we ended up doing a slightly different version, but the thing that I think is common in both versions is it's a celebration, right? It is a celebration and it's, it, it comes at you so easy. And it's one of those songs you think you've heard before, right? And, but it sneaks up on you in how easy, it, but, but the message is so beautiful because it's one of devotion. So yeah, yeah, it's a beauty, beauty too. Yeah, it's a big hug. John's yeah, version is a big thing hug. like that. Yeah, that's real looking at it. And you'll be true. I want to talk about around the corner. Around the corner, I have a friend. In this great city that has no end, yet the days go by and the weeks rush on, and before I know it, a year is gone. Uh, he wrote the poem around the corner, and it's it it's basically um, what so many of us get caught up in. You know, I always talk about my mom and her phone book. And every as we're coming up to Christmas, she'll she'll find somebody in the phone book she hasn't talked to and phone them. But she'll phone them. Whereas around the corner, it talks about that friend you had, that friend you you're a really good friend, and you haven't seen them in a long time. And almost weekly, you say to yourself, I, you know, I got, I got to phone, I got to phone Jim. Uh, I got to call him. I got to go see him. And then you, you know, and, and man, when we were kids, oh, he'd ring my bell and I rang his man, and we were, we'd go out and blah and da uh, and uh, we remember all the fabulous things, and we haven't talked to him in years. And I think next week I'm gonna, I'm gonna go around and and just see Jim and tell him I'm thinking of him. And before that happens, he got a telegram telling him Jim just died. It's just a message, a reminder that when you get that urge to get in touch or call someone that you know you love and you respect, do it. Friendships are taken, you know, you gotta take them to where they belong, and that's right here, and make sure that you hold on to them, and make sure that those friends know that you're thinking of them. It's not, it's not a, it's not a hard thing to do. A year, a month, you know, yeah. The first time I came into the Sumbler house was really strange because uh, the first thing I saw was a platter of cold meats. Um, 
and uh, you know drinks and coffee and stuff like that. And, um, the emphasis of the studio uh, seemed, you know, what you would think it would seem to be the emphasis was the food, but it was actually it was putting you at ease and making you comfortable. That's what the place was about. There's nothing pretentious about this place. It's a really comfortable space. Um, so you're not, there's nothing intimidating about it. The only thing that's intimidating is every once in a while the curtains on that window open up and Mark's standing there looking at you, uh, trying to tell you something, figure out that's, you know he's always right. But um, the communication um, is, is easy here. The, the, the feeling is relaxed. Um, and, and there's no, it's not shiny. It doesn't have to be. It's just a really, really warm room. Um, kind of like, you know, I, I compare it kind of like being in my basement or being in my, my, my bunkie up north. It's just a, a really comfortable, nice place to be. And, you know, I, I'm hard pressed to find a clock, which I enjoy because, um, it's the first thing a lot of people look for in a place. Is, you know, we've got to watch our time. Time is there's of no consequence in this space. It's until we're finished, or until we want to take a break. It's 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 that's one of the nice things about it. Um, you never feel you're under the gun. You just take your time and, and do what you're doing, and and then he'll tell you whether you got it or not. And that was it. That's that's this this is a great space, and I don't. I've recorded in some of the greatest studios in the world, but I, you know, I, I, I drive out here and spend a day and hang with Mark and learn and uh, and be a better a better person, a better musician for it, a better performer for it. Another one of the songs that 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 floored me was, and I had no idea he was doing it, was a, a song called "Somewhere in Me There Is You." And, you know, since 1995, I've had my father's cane on stage with me and I've had one of his bonnets on stage with me. And since 2000, I've had those two items plus uh, one of my mother's scarves. That, um, they bring back to me fond memories of my parents. That's why they're there. Initially, they were there because I really miss my dad and I needed to have something. And I lean on that sometimes when, when times are, when it's a tough show. And we all have them, but they're there to support me. And so it, it developed into that, that uh, that's what I saw when I came on stage. And, it, and it, it put me at ease. And they were with me on stage. They're with me every day. And I tell that story about my dad and my mom and how she was the one who, uh, you know, was influential in, in the recording of, of certain songs, but certainly any of the hymn albums I did, and especially Greatest Thy Faithfulness. Um, my father, um, I inherited my dad's voice. Um, uh, he had a spectacular voice. And uh, so much so that um, I have a recording of him in a pub where he was bartending in 1958. And I took it and placed it as the last track on, this, on the CD, Loves of Voyage. It's a bit rusty and shaky, but there's no mistaking that it's a, an amazingly controlled and spectacular voice that's now singing the last rose of summer. Till the last rose of summer. And Mark says, I've got a song for you. And uh, and he sent it and I listened to it. And it was your bonnets, your cane, your scarves are all here. Every show, every stage, all through the years. He managed to take, um, he managed to take that two little items, it was three items, and turn them into this whole journey that my journey had been on because of what emanated from these items my mom and dad and the sacrifices that they made in order for me to enjoy doing what I'm doing 
and the importance of how they raised us. And so that's all there. It's all right there. And, and yeah, every time I'm singing, every, every, every show, every stage, all through the years, beautiful one. The, the, those items are there for everyone to see because I want everyone to know how important the gift of my father's voice and the gift of the gift of, of having them as my our guidance a lot of people take for granted and you, you know I, I, I just like to nudge myself every day to say yeah that's why you you are where you who you are where you are So you guys don't like working together at all? <laughs> it doesn't really work. It's I mean it works like on a on a professional level, but on a personal level it's a grind. It's a tough grind. It's very tough, very tough. But we've acknowledged it. We work through it. Oh, there's always Jackie and me. <laughs> It's just an easy, smooth roller coaster ride. It's not anything too high or too low or too fast or too slow. It's just nice. It's like, you know, just like rolling on the water. And it um, takes you to places that you cherish, places that perhaps you may not be comfortable in, but you're going to go anyway and you're going to, you're going to, uh, you're going to experience it and share it. And that's, that's exactly what we've done. There will be Too much for you, too much for me, but not for us, not for